I think if you click on meeting or something at the top top left. Yeah. I think I think it's recording now. I, I'm not really I, sure. I turned it off. Oh yeah, it says recording. Yeah, it says recording. Cool. Well. Great. Perfect. There you go. Okay. Great. <laughs> See you okay, so I'll see you in like ten minutes. <laughs> okay, great. Great. I'll put myself on mute. I don't want to leave because otherwise I might not be able to get back in. Um Okay, cool. No, that's fine. See you later. I'll see you in ten. Bye. Bye. Fuck. Oh wait. Hi, good evening. This is Sophie here. Hello, Sophie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, thanks you for joining us. I'm Vanessa's sister, by the way. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I think I, I figured it out by the surname. <laughs> um, but it's fine. We're starting in 10 minutes. So sure. she should be joining sometime yeah. soon. I just didn't want to be late, you know? Yeah. No, no, no. It's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> You have a lot of books out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's my parents' house. So it's not, I wish it was mine, but um, yeah. That's so cool. Nice. Yeah. It's hard to get bored in this house. There's a lot of things going on. <laughs> um, I'm going to mute myself for a second because I have to do like a quick call just to check about sure. something. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Martin? Hello? Hello. Hi. How are you? Wait, can you see me? Yes. yes. Okay, here I am. Hi, how are you? 
Hello, Hi, how are you? very well. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing? We're starting in like four minutes, so we still have some time. Amazing. Yeah, good. Just excited to be mm -hmm. here. Yeah, how's everything in London? Oh, everything is... Well, the weather is great today. It's great <laughs> uh, in terms of weather. Uh, so okay. the rest is, I don't know, it's, it's going, it's cool. Yeah. It's fine. Mm -hmm. um, Where are you based? In Spain or? Yes, I'm in Spain at the moment. Uh, can you change the gallery? So I'm just trying to sort something out in here. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Tommy. Um, in the top right of the Zoom, mm -hmm. it says like where you can like enter full screen. It should say gallery view or speaker view. Mm. I think mine's in nine. Spanish. Okay. It should have nine nine squares or yeah one rectangle with three squares on top. Mm -hmm. um, can you click on it so mm -hmm. it has? So it has in the corner it has the rectangle with three squares on top. Yeah. So when they yeah when they're back on video, it will show you guys side by side rather than once at a time. Okay. Like, Hi. Yeah. Um, but it's it's more about like the presentation. Oh yeah. So hi guys. By the way, sorry. <laughs> audio. Um, yeah. <laughs> this voice is Tammy. By the way. <laughs> I'll, I'll get my video on to say hello quickly. Hello. <laughs> um, so, um, sorry. When you share the screen, um, mm -hmm. you know where the PDF or whatever document you're using to share? Mm -hmm. You can just make it smaller so it takes up less of your screen so you can still have the questions on the right or the, the left. Mm -hmm. um, if you exit full screen, essentially. Okay. Otherwise, I can download it and share it for you. Okay, I think that would be great if you can do that because I'm not really yep. sure. I think I sent it to you. Yeah, you did. I'll find it now. Okay, sorry about this. Um, I'll guess when to turn the page. <laughs> um, uh, just a gallery of images. Should I send it again? Uh, no, it's fine. It's just my Wi-Fi is a bit slow. Okay, great. Sorry about these initial technical problems. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh no, we have been doing this for three weeks already. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of introduce also the festival once uh, we start, which would be in like two minutes. Let's just give it some time for people to arrive. Sure. Um, but yeah, this is, without, we're actually finishing this week after three weeks of workshops, talks, interviews, I don't know. Uh, round tables so yeah it's exciting and it will go online i mean it, it is going to be recorded and then it's going to be online in the website of three men make a tiger yeah. uh so anyone that hasn't had the chance to see it today or if you want to share it with anyone or you want to i don't know rewatch anything it's going to be on the website amazing um so yeah okay i'm gonna close this um Cool. Nice you... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking, we were having an uh the other day we were having like uh, another another talk. Well, I was hosting another talk last week and basically they were saying how how important it is to like find the perfect background for this kind of like mm. online um interviews. So I thought, I don't know, 
it looks well. <laughs> yeah. Very homey. Yeah, it is homey. It is homey. Can we see like all the people in here or or? Um, like... they're not supposed to turn on their mics or their camera. Um, but there will be like the chat is open, so in case anyone wants to ask any questions along the entire um, session talk, they can ask the questions. And if there's time in the end, we can uh, give space to those questions. Amazing. Um, we'll but make we'll to make that time. <laughs> Sorry. We'll make sure that there's enough time for questions. Yes, let's hope so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think let's give it like. I don't know, a minute or so, and then we can start. Um, a yeah. yeah. Um, I've got the PDF downloaded, so let me know when I, and then I can share it. Okay. I think, yeah, should we, let's, let's give it maybe like a minute or so. Um, sure, no worries. Um, but yeah, how have, have you uh, continued your studio visits after the lockdown? We've actually done two visits now, mm -hmm. so that's been amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a bit of a rare situation because either artists have felt very motivated to make a lot of work during this time, mm -hmm. and other artists are like um, feeling very unmotivated. And uh, so there's either one type, like one extreme or the other. Like they've done so much work that it's a lot, or they've literally not produced anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, luckily, we visit the two artists that we visited. We had produced quite a lot of work, yeah. mm -hmm. so it was really nice to see how it's changed uh, through lockdown. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they also, have you? Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, they, I was saying they were also based nearby our place, so mm -hmm. we don't have to take like public transport or other places like that. You know, mm -hmm. we we went walking. Yeah. Yeah. Which was, yeah. And I guess it's been nice also to like start redoing things physically instead yeah. of online, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Especially being such an important part of everything that you do, like the studio visits, I guess it's been really nice to go back to that. Yeah. Um, okay, well, Tammy, whenever you want, I think we can uh, start, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Cool. Um, let me just give it a second. Okay. Great. Well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. I am Momo and I will be hosting this live talk with uh, Vanessa and Martin, which are the co-founders of the Tegel Arts. Uh, so firstly, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, the festival which is uh, the program that has been hosting live talks, roundtables, um, interviews, uh, workshops for the last three weeks. So basically Three Men Make a Tiger is an online festival that has been organized by the students and now alumni, because we graduated three weeks ago, of uh, BA Photography at London College of Communication, which is part of uh, the University of the Arts, London. So basically accompanying our now online degree show, which is live, and I recommend everyone to go and visit. Um, we have organized this festival in which you are at the moment. And as already been said, this has been going on for three weeks. We've had amazing people coming and you can check everything online if you haven't had the chance to see it so far. And we'll be finishing this Friday. So today uh, we're gonna hear from Vanessa and Martin, which are the co-founders, as said, of Dat Eagle Art. And well, in, basically today, I guess we'll be talking about a photography, the way they use photography and how they use it in their studio visits, but as a general aesthetics um, and we'll understand the reasons why they use this photography and their approach to it. So I'm going to briefly introduce the Tegel Arts in case you don't know it, but I'm sure you do. And if not, I really recommend uh, going to their website and checking everything we, they do. Uh, the Tegel Arts is an online platform that is based in London and it was founded in 2017. And um, yeah, it's an online platform that highlights um, the work of emerging artists. Um, so basically they produce a wide range of content from studio visits to interviews to journal posts 
they also focus on the music that artists listen to in a mix section. Um, so they basically try to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they try to come really close to the artist and understanding the artist. And besides of this, they also have like a curatorial practice in which they organize exhibitions, uh, breaking uh, outside, stepping outside of the normative and the white wall. And basically they have like a really close relationship with all of their artists, uh, always aiming to come closer to them, to give them, yeah, like to yeah, give them that visibility through their platform and create a community with them. Um, so today we're going to focus on the studio visit section. Uh, so basically they go to the studios of these artists and they document these studios um, through analog photography, but I won't go into that just then. Um, so first of all, Vanessa Martin, thank you so much for being here. Um, <laughs> you couldn't have done such a better introduction. I was actually going to ask, like, can you, do you want to add anything to that? <laughs> oh, <Or do> you... <laughs> perfect. Okay, I'm happy that I, because you do so, like, such a, like, big, um, like, such a range, wide range of things that I was like, okay, let's try to um, explain this as best as possible. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, like, if you could, like, introduce the Tegel Art in your, like maybe not as such as what you're doing, if, you're, if you agree with my definition, but basically how it kind of started and what are its founding ideas? Sure, I mean, uh, so Martin and me don't come from art backgrounds in the sense of studying art history or um, fine art. So we, we come from, a, Martin comes from a graphic design background and I come from like a fashion perspective. And um, yeah, we used to work in our jobs and there was one time that we, we were quite uh, sick of the industry and needed to, to take a break. So in our, in our break, we started visiting artist studios, uh, arranging studio visits. Uh, actually, it started in kind of degree shows, university, recent graduates. And it was no in initial purpose of um, developing Dati de Large or opening a website. It was just meeting people, engaging with a community of, of people that we could feel identified with, that we enjoyed their, their way of thinking. And it was one artist actually was Antonia Showering. I, I remember who uh, she was saying to us like, you guys ask so good questions. Like you should definitely publish these questions somewhere. And for us, it was more like, really silly questions because we didn't come from that background so we were just curious to know like what is this made of how is it made like we to understand it particularly when we didn't uh, really feel engaged with that um we didn't know much about the the industry at all so yeah it was through that artist that we started to think oh maybe we should actually publish these uh, studio visits in, in a place have an archive of our visits so it formed really organically I think I think it all started as well as you know we we were fans of you know like uh, blogs of music or blogs about movies and theater books about you know whatever other thing but they were not a lot of blogs about like contemporary art like back then you know and and we were like we should do something like this you know something really DIY uh, something very transparent something just like a hobby something you know like. Uh, not very professional. So we started to play around going to galleries and to openings just for the dreams, you know, at the beginning. Um, and then as Vanessa was saying, we start, we jumped to meet some artists. We basically started to contact them by uh, Instagram uh, through DMs and stuff. And we started to create this whole uh, community of people, mostly students back then, uh, but also people from different age, you know, uh, ranges uh, from different backgrounds, from different sort of old universities as well, from, you know. Also self-taught self artists. So from the beginning, we were very curious to see different perspectives to open our, our vision on, uh, you know, artists that have had education, artists that haven't. As Martin said, different ethnicities, different genders. 
and the the sense of the DIY the blog is something that we always were very focused on so even when we did launch a website which, which was a year after that we uh, intentionally um, curated it in the sense that it could include the dates of when the content was published so it could form a sort of diary where you can scroll and see the progression also because we have been learning to write we have been learning to document in this time um, but something very interesting is that we've been using the same camera throughout the whole three years of our studio visits so it's not as that has evolved with with time like we wanted to keep the real essence of how it started it's a really like tiny small black point and shoot camera which i'm sure we will speak about it later um, but it, yeah it was very important for us from the beginning to to set the boundaries and say we, we didn't want a hyper curated aesthetic we wanted it to be very blog like as martin mentioned very diy and that's why we decided from early on that we would use an analog photograph uh, analog camera mm -hmm. and that we would do it ourselves rather than um you know working with a photographer that that would be trained to to do that mm -hmm. so it all started through the studio visits and then you grew up the the entire like other sections of what you publish at the moment yeah it, it all grew you know kind of organically uh mm -hmm. very very fast i have to say and, and also some friends of us uh, they they were like and they're still saying like like you guys keep active so much you know and you just do and do and do and 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 we and we don't stop and that's actually true you know but mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that it's been so fast, it's been this process that, you know, we have, you know, any kind of idea and then we we try to to make it possible, you know, in terms of how to support, how to give more visibility or exposure to, to any sort of artist that we like. Mm -hmm. I you think know. something that was very present is that it, it did start with the studio visits um, because it was that physical interaction. Mm -hmm. and I guess after translating that into an, an online activity, we were very aware that we wanted to reach multiple audiences and also audiences that were not part of the art industry such as ourselves. So, and, and you know, we also have dialogue with people that are not from the industry and maybe they don't like to read or there's other people that uh, prefer to view images rather than read text or there's all sorts of people. So we thought we kind of curated the content in order to fulfill all of the senses in a way. So we've got, uh, as you very mentioned at, in the introduction, the studio visits which is more for people who really just want to loosely look at images and you know uh, think about a, a space through through the images and the mood and you know feel inspired by the pictures and then there's other people that really engage with uh, long texts and articles and maybe that type of people engages more with our journal section which is you know articles and longer essays and and in-depth texts or uh, interviews is a middle ground between between both so they do have images and text mm -hmm. and then the mix which you mentioned is based on sound so from the beginning we were we were thinking about uh, how to incorporate a platform that ha could have all of these different senses the the vision the sound um and and the, and the text as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so when you started like you started going to the degree shows and you started like seeing emerging artists recent graduates that you would like enjoy their work so basically i can i say that that you follow your own criteria when it comes to this like how how do you curate the artists that you want to like visit or interview or do the mix section or anything and has this evolved from since when you started yes is our authority you know <laughs> mm -hmm. we, are the ones who select the artists you know that we're going to feature in the website or, or to work with in the future within a you know exhibition or whatever other sort of project we are super active you know on instagram and facebook mostly instagram and um, i think that well i think we think that uh, instagram is the main uh, you know point of connection to to get to know and to discover as well uh, different artists and new artists. I mean, we try our best not to be influenced by um, media of what they write about artists. Um, sometimes we visited artists that you could consider risky to visit because they've actually had bad press yeah. uh, and they've been spoken up very badly. But we were curious to know if, if, if what the media was representing is actually what that person's feeling or uh, was. So we have also you know, visited artists that could be considered 
um, you know, not a particularly, um, yeah, in, in the eye of the media. And uh, as well, we try not to, uh, you know, look too much at what other people are doing, or uh, even if we are engaged in social media, we, we also like to be able to remove from that and mm -hmm. figure out things, you know, just going to a show and finding someone that you feel excited about. We, we, we are always watching, you know, so we know like who's working with, mm -hmm. uh, who's not working with who, you know. So uh, we, as you were saying, we always try to escape from that, you know, bubble in London of yes, all these mini groups of people working all the time mm -hmm. together. I think something that was um, in that line is that we, we did, when we started to be involved in visiting artists, we would see that those artists would recommend us to other artists, but often it would be artists within their same community, similar thinking, similar aesthetics. And we wanted to, so at the beginning, there was a lot of artists that came from the Slade School of Art, for instance. It was not, not for a particular reason. It just happened to be that one artist studied there and introduced us to another one. And, and then we kind of were in this bubble where we were thinking, how do we break from this bubble? Like, we don't want to just include people with one perspective. We need to, you know, uh, uh, and also what we thought is that the art world or um, it's quite segmented. You know, there's a lot of platforms only for female artists, mm -hmm. only for digital artists only for specific voices, which we are definitely in favor of and it's much needed. But also we felt like that wasn't true to our thinking because we are such diverse people uh, with mixed backgrounds, uh, female, male. Uh, we, we have been grown up in completely different social classes, completely different uh, backgrounds. And what interests us was that diversity and inclusion and equality of content, uh, the high and the, and the low. Mm -hmm. and okay. Um, yeah, the, the age representation as well. So it was all of that, you know, diversity which really interested us from the beginning and always trying to move away from, from being classified, which we think is a way that many people get to be recognized for what they do. And you, and you can read it throughout our, our history, like there's always been times where people have been recognized as, you know, minimalists or surrealism or any, like there's a group of people uh, thinking similarly, but we try to avoid being classified with, with a particular type of group of artists or type of thinking. Mm -hmm. And that reflects not only in our content, but also in our shows. So we've done all sculpture shows and then we've moved on and the reacting show was an all, all painting show. And, and like that, we always try to react against what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have like a, of course, like you, you cover a lot of disciplines in art, but your own aesthetic is quite strong. Would you agree on that? Like the, the aesthetic of the website and the aesthetic, especially now going into photography, the point and shoot photography, um, yeah. Do you, do, you, do you consider you have like such a strong or, or not? Or is it just like something you self-identify this or is it like a meditative decision to like follow always the same like point and shoot photography? It's, uh, well, I think, I think we have, I don't know if it's strong or not strong, mm -hmm. but we have an aesthetic and that's for sure, you know, we're very proud of it and, and, and it represents us so much, not only, you know, in the professional world of the art world, but, mm -hmm. uh, in our personal lives, you know. So that combination of, you know, uh, the digital realm and then the analog feel of the, to the photography that we do uh, and how we connect it uh, is, is, is the result of that singularity basically and, and most of the content. Uh, not only that, but when we collaborate with different, you know, third parties or fourth parties or the different other people of collective in the art world, uh, we are very happy for them to write for us, you know, in a collaborative way, but it only, and we're very open, you know, but the only, uh, let's say, limitations that we put to them is just to uh, combine, you know, the text with analog images from analog photography. So we're mm -hmm. up always to, to pay for a dispensable camera and the developing of it for all writers and, and the teams that we work with and collaborate, just to have that, you know, feel that inclusion of, of uh, Oh, the, the photography. I mean, I guess as you were saying, there's such diversity or that we try to consider with mediums, with 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 you know diversities, and so the, we had to have something that that was a limitation in that sense because if not, it could just grow and grow and become 
Uh, so we needed that element of control and the analog was a good way to limit things. So it was mm -hmm. from the beginning, we were very conscious that uh, we can only have 36 exposures per studio visit. So that, it, that's equivalent also of the time that we spend in the space because if, if you know yeah. when the film finishes we don't have any a reason to stay there longer unless we want to of mm -hmm. course keep in conversation with the artist but it was also a way to limit the time in a in a place to limit um you know the images that we take to concentrate on the core of the message that we want to transmit uh, mm -hmm. we had to really think okay in these 36 images what do we want to show the people I mm -hmm. guess because um, we are so used to, you know, getting our phones and, and, and taking pictures of the spaces, uh, it could go infinitely, right? So that was a big limitation mm -hmm. that we put ourselves. And I guess that limitation has also made us very UK centric, because of course, we, if, if we would interview just people uh, digitally without visiting their spaces and documenting their spaces physically, uh, we could do interviews as, as we're doing now with, so, you know, someone in New York or someone any place in the world, but being ha having the limitation of being present physically in mm -hmm. that space and documenting them with analog makes us move close by to where we are. And that's initially made us grow a network of peers and artists that we, that we have connected with. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I, I agree that it gives also like a continuity to everything you do. Like I can instantly recognize a picture that comes from that Eagle Art whenever I'm scrolling in Instagram or something like that, which I mm -hmm. guess it's really also like, um, it's nice to be recognized uh, from that. And it's kind of exciting. Like I'm always like, oh, they published something new. Let me, let me go and check. Um, and I guess like when it comes to photography and going back to your camera, um like there's a lot of like instruments that you can use and different cameras that you can use in analog photography but you precisely use a black point and shoot that you have you been using since day one um so i guess it's also a part of the team i was wondering if you could like let us know a bit more about that relationship with that camera and the decision of like to use that camera and that like flash uh to document yeah uh well we you know, at this time to, to do studio visits and to to take uh, this analog photography, we were doing it at the beginning with a disposable camera, you know, with a few disposable cameras, and then we decided to get a real one, a, a proper one. So we had it in eBay, and we saw this one for five pounds, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this Minota. I think it's I think it's from the from the seventies or something. I'm not pretty sure. I don't even know the name of the of the model, you know, but that's mm -hmm. that's the wonderful thing about it. I just know the brand. And uh, it was, we received it and, and it, was, it was working really well. And we tried it, we tested it, and, and then we decided to go with that one. That one was, that one's still working really well, you know. Uh, you just have a, a, a really precise zoom, not very much options. You have flash, a really strong and powerful flash, which from like perhaps, I don't know, after a year, we were doing pictures with and without flash. So at some point, you know, we were like, we need to do all the pictures with flash, uh, even with some studios which are, uh, you know, open air on the outside. Mm -hmm. we always have to use flash. I mean, yeah. from the beginning, where you mentioned the use of flash and the, there's a, this contrast that we have between intimacy and intrusion, which we really like, and we, and we spoke about it in the past. Um, but uh, we well usually um, how it works the dynamics is that one of our well we both uh, visit the studio and we would see who has more con compatibility with the artist based on that there's one person that acts like a like a distracting person who's the person who speaks with the artist and maintains the conversation and the other person takes the role of the photographer who shoots and is moving around the space uh, and shooting everything they can so we quite like that dynamic of being two and being able to coordinate ourselves it's very performative uh, we take on these roles and basically uh, the person who shoots just moves around and it's quite intrusive because we we get quite close to to what we're do shooting so um you know we might go into details of a particular work very close or even things objects that are very sacred to those you know some people are not so open to to share their studios uh, visibly like on 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 the website some people it's a very sacred space so we, we always try for the artists to feel comfortable 
Mm -hmm. And when they are that comfortable with us, we just go as close as we can and as detailed as we can. So, and that element of flash is also quite intrusive because even if, you know, as, as Martin mentioned, it's a small black camera, it's very unnoticeable. It's, you know, it's not like a big, huge camera that you're putting to a person and it makes you feel a bit intimidated. It's a very easygoing and neutral. It's almost like a phone. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's all about the size as well. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's also the sound of this camera is just crazy, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's extremely noisy, and even though you know you don't see it at first, you're mm -hmm. gonna see it at some point of the visit. Yeah, and that's not, true. I mean, there's this like I don't know, like two second process of this noise all the time, uh, picture after picture. So uh, mm -hmm. it's still quite technological and, and 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 futuristic by the time, but it's obviously it's not like. Uh, an actual camera so it's very old but uh yeah yeah, yeah i think that's what we enjoy the contrast between something that's very familiar very low maintenance very you know simple um and something that's quite um you know is that's very familiar and then something quite intrusive which is how close we go to to what we're portraying and also the element of the flash which is like Quite unexpected and, and we really like the flush because it brings out the energy of the space mm -hmm. it's something that we've we always use now and we want to keep consistent with it with the flash mm -hmm. it, it can be considered by many people that it's not uh, particularly flattering the flash but mm -hmm. we think it you know because even some paintings you can see the flash reflection but we just think it, it really captures the essence of the moment yeah. mm -hmm. also yeah. that I, say, I have to mention that uh, every time we go to a visit, like one of the first things we say to the artist is, you know, I have this camera, and if it's okay with you, I'm going to take a few pictures at your studio and yourself, you know. And, and then once they know, you have to build a real quick uh, trust relationship, you know, that quick uh, connection with, with them to feel comfortable on the pictures and also with uh, two strangers taking pictures of their personal stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously now, that, I think now some artists uh, check the website before and they feel like, you know, okay, they take pictures, you know, so they might have really, um, you know, a few uh, stuff in their studios and also themselves. Uh, they like to dress up and, 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 you know, to put makeup on. So they know that we're going uh, for the pictures as well. That's mm -hmm. actually yeah. one of the most yeah. important things, you know, trying to transmit through the pictures that space, that personal um, an intimate space for me all of this. I mm -hmm. think one thing that, that we do is like we, we try to transmit the voice of the artist through those glimpses and fragments of the space. Mm -hmm. You're never going to see an image with the full perspective of the space. It's always little glimpses and little snapshots of details. So and also those details say so much about the person, you know, what they collect, what they have in their space, which colors, which mood, you know, if they have a particular thing that's in the center and they've given a lot of attention to if they have things thrown around why you know so we we always try to take a portrait of, of a person through the object that's around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think also the fact that you also have like 36 images as you were saying it's quite like it determines quite um a lot the the of course uh, besides the amount of images that you can take it also determines uh maybe the the time that you spend there and you had an interview with Metal Magazine, which you said something that I found really interesting. Uh, oh. When you, yeah, you yeah, mentioned, sorry. Hello. <laughs> um, hi. hi, sorry. If if you're watching this, I would please ask you to mute yourself, and then we have like a chat for for questions. So if you want to put type any question, it would be amazing to have it on there. Uh, so we don't like, um, yeah, we can move smoothly <laughs> through the interview. Uh, but yeah, going back to the Metal Magazine, you mentioned something that you said basically that you defy the notion of the algorithm, which I think it's a really interesting thing to say, especially, of course, like addressing technology, addressing Instagram, addressing like the post that you see first. I don't know if it goes in that line, but certainly, I guess, using analog photography defies the algorithm as in like it kind of fights the amount of images that you can take but I'm not sure like maybe it doesn't go in that line but I just thought like yeah it is a really uh, interesting sentence. I think defying that algorithm I mean for us is also the algorithm of you know social media and hashtags mm -hmm. 
and there's an echo chamber of images that you find in there and how saturated some images are, hyper curated. Even some artists that we're aware of like mm -hmm. make work through the Instagram, like through the comments, you know, if they published a piece and it's particularly popular, they might follow that for the next piece that they do. So mm -hmm. many artists are very in this in this loop of Instagram and hyper curation. And I guess defying the notion of the algorithm through analog is is a way for us to break the norm of like you know not being so hyper curated and trying to be a bit more authentic with with how we reflect the space and the studio mm -hmm. um, and yeah i mean actually at the beginning we we don't publish exhibition reviews or uh, opinions about exhibitions because it's not something that we particularly enjoy doing that you know we don't consider ourselves critics we want to have a neutral voice mm -hmm. so always try to have that neutral aspect and not not give a, a, our our own opinion but the view of the artist but at, in the beginning we did try to do reviews when we were starting the experiment and we would often take photographs in the gallery spaces of that show and when we would publish the review with our own images some galleries would literally ask us to take the images off like mm -hmm. away and they would send us their hyper curated installation mm -hmm. shot images to replace our own images and mm -hmm. we were from the beginning we were like no we're not going to take our images off because this is what it actually looks like like some installation shots do not make like it's it's not the same as the physical uh, you know experience sometimes the the photography is better than the mm -hmm. actual shows so for us it was the most way to you know mm -hmm. most authentic way to present what mm -hmm. we've actually seen uh, how we see it um so yeah even you know that 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 goes with with that idea of breaking the algorithm or what you know even in the media um when when an artist gets press it's you always see the same images uh, mm -hmm. around yeah so in terms of this mass production from your personal opinion what would you think are the main challenges of photography nowadays hmm. Hmm. I think it's a big question. <laughs> it's a big question. I mean, there's a lot going on, but um, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, what what do you think, Martin? What is the main challenge? Well, I think it's important to keep you know photography alive. Uh, but no, in the, I'm not saying how to how to how to put this. You know, like we are super. We embrace you know the past these nostalgic feelings all the time um, through photography or writing or graphic design or whatever, you know? So for us, it's really important uh, to analyze photography and, and, and to film, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we like digital photography and we use it every day, literally. Like we, we use the photography from our phones to send screenshots, to take pictures of, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, uh, we reckon that, you know, that photography should be used for something in that direction and this other one in another direction mm -hmm. or how just missing the mode you know uh, to risk for me it's just to respect uh, the role of the photographer and, and the photography uh, such as you know as what it is really. I think the main challenge is that we all have access to photography at the moment so what you were saying in terms of how, how to find your voice through photography, I feel like that's such a difficult thing at the moment, um, considering everyone can, you know, consider themselves a photographer if they take pictures and they publish mm -hmm. them. So that, that would be the main um, challenge as a, as a photographer, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about maybe as your curators yourself, what do you... I don't know what what are your thoughts on photography curate curation at the moment because we've al already talked about production and also like about showcasting but maybe on social media but what what could be your opinions on on photography curation nowadays I mean uh, <laughs> we we've seen a few shows by photographers mostly they've been quite well known ones like the Tillman's show at the Tate re retrospective a few years back and things like that but um I would say it's very difficult to, I mean, sometimes the image is really nice to see it as, as, a, as, a, as an image, but then, you know, putting that into a physical space, it's a different thing. So even as if the image is very powerful, um, it's really considering the space and the architecture of the space and how that image works in that space, which is mm -hmm. something 
that for us is really important at the time of curating. It's the dialogue between the, you know, the works and the space. And, and the same is for our studio visits, is the dialogue between the artists and their studio. Mm -hmm. So we always consider the context of, of where things are being shown and, and why. So I, I would say like, we have never done a photography show. Mm -hmm. We have shown photography in the past in, in a few of our shows. But it's 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 a difficult one. Uh, you know, many photographers also frame their works uh, even with glass, so mm -hmm. uh, it's not very flattering. You know, at the time of taking pictures, installation shots of, of the of the of the work, and then you have the reflecting glass. Or mm -hmm. I don't know. I think there's a lot of dialogue to 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 think about when curating I think, photography. I think that's something really important. You know, for for uh, a photographer to to show their work. You know. I think that's the point where a photographer turns into an artist, perhaps. You know, obviously an exhibition is a composition of these texts, these concepts and ideas behind it, and the physical stuff mm -hmm. and the whole uh, the whole thing, you know. But you don't have to show photography just in a frame with a glass, you know, in a wall, you know. I mean, you can show it in many, many different ways. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the type of curation that we are always aiming to, mm -hmm. you know, to reach uh, something not very usual something just just not <laughs> a frame in the wall basically mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah like maybe stepping outside of the white cube but in terms of photography i guess yeah definitely, i would definitely. say unfortunately many photographers are really really great and but, but the way that maybe they, they approach that physically doesn't make justice to their work mm -hmm. yeah that, actually that show from from tillman's at the tate modern uh I'm not a fan of his work, mm -hmm. uh, but that show was really, really interesting, you know, for, an, for a photographer mm -hmm. and a living artist. I remember, I remember that room, he, he made this room with, you know, sofas and, and pillows on the floor and these two massive speakers. All the room was blue, none for, no, no pictures in there, you know, and then just this record player, he was playing hard style like all the time or something like that, mm -hmm. or drum and bass or something like that, real, real, real high, you know, really strong. And that was part of the exhibition, you know? And that's, that's, that's really interesting for, for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you see the pictures and the curation, how he did it. He just mixed these frames with these rolls, with these prints, with these stickers, with yeah. the documentation of it on, on tables. And I remember also this picture of Frank Ocean, like in the corner, real, real high, like mm -hmm. super random, you know, like what is that, you know, picture is doing in that corner over there. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, you can look. Walls, you can look throughout the whole space. Yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. the walls of the tape modern are really high, so that you know makes it even even stronger. The whole mm -hmm. thing was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. sorry, in terms of curation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, and I think there's a movement towards that at the moment, which I think yeah. it's kind of really yeah. interesting. Um, so basically, given your experience with, as you were saying, you started like really talking to graduates um, and emerging artists. Um, as you know, this is, a sh this is a festival that's curated for students. Well, it's curated for a lot of people that have an interest in photography, but there is a lot of uh, students around. So I would say, would you have any advice from your experience in the industry and your experience in art and photography as an art? Um, do you have any advice for young photographers and artists? Yes. <laughs> First of all, I would say to have your own individual voice, um, mm -hmm. not to follow any trends, mm -hmm. uh, make work that's really authentically yours. Mm -hmm. uh, that, well, yes. I, I, would say, I would say like to keep, First of all, to have a presence, to a presence on the online, you know, and then mm -hmm. secondly, to keep it all up to date and quite interesting to, to look at because that's how people get to know your work and get to know you. And obviously, there's no need to, to, to say that. You need to share as much as possible of your work. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that it's super difficult for a photographer uh, to select your own work, you know, what to publish in one note. I mean, I'm generalizing. I'm, I'm not talking for mm -hmm. everyone, but I'm, that's at least for myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would also say don't be afraid or yeah, it's weird to, to, to talk to somebody else, perhaps, perhaps an outsider and, and show them your pictures and be like, what do you think about this and what do you think mm -hmm. about that? You know? 
mm -hmm. uh, just to get to to know the opinions of the people, you know, and, and they don't have to be people in the photography or in the artwork. It could be a mix of everything. Yeah, and that's something that we actually do ourselves even uh, at this stage. Like every time we curate an exhibition, we write the text, the press release text for it. And, you know, we always ask another writer to check it for the grammar and, and all of those things. But apart from that, we always send it to someone <laughs> whether in our families or someone that has no idea about art language to read it and tell us if they've understood anything so even us day to day we we always try to find a voice that's accessible i would say for a photographer as martin said share your your images and ask opinions to people whether it's uh, you know very mm -hmm. knowledgeable people in that industry or whether it's a friend of yours it's mm -hmm. it's irrelevant their position like it's good to know the opinions of, of a diverse number of people, regardless of their backgrounds or education. Yeah. And yeah. also, I would say many photographers or artists in general should take responsibility in making connections. It's such a good way to get to things, uh, okay. whether approaching collaborators or forming friendships and networks. Uh, you know, there's always that support network that has to be grown uh, within people. Mm -hmm. I would also add something else, like for uh, you know a photographer or a student to talk to, to talk to a curator, and, and, and you know a curator in in, in, in the arts, and it doesn't have to be like Hans Ulrich, you know, or or us. It can be whatever sort of curator mm -hmm. about your work and how to uh, display it and how to show it. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. frames are really really boring. Yeah. Of course, and and well, I, I'm just going to say briefly, we're reaching to, we're getting towards the end of this talk. So if anyone has any questions, it would be the greatest moment to put them in the chat. Um, and while that happens, uh, wait, there's a question. Hi, this okay. is Sophie here. Can I ask a question? Oh, is it okay if you can type it down in the chat? So we have like a kind of order of questions. Oh yeah, absolutely, I'll do that. Okay, great, thank you so much. So we have a question here that says, I'm, I'm not sure if you can read it, okay. but it says, when you arrive at someone's studio, do you feel people tidy up their space before you arrive, or do you ask them to leave it as authentic as possible? Good one, good one, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, um, we always, as Martin said, uh, let artists know that we are going to photograph and that uh, we, we cannot control if uh, what they do when we say that. So no, we never tell them, like in an email in advance, you know, we tell them, you know, at the time to meet them for the very first time. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. So um, we, yeah, so I guess um, many people do tidy their studio when they greet people naturally. It's, you know, even, you know, when you greet someone at your home, you make sure everything's clean. And, you know, so I think that's a natural thing of hosting someone in your space. Many artists buy us treats, so I, weirdly, uh, and or even flowers, which we think is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, you can see those details that people have actually prepared or waited mm -hmm. for you, or like some people have removed things that they do, do not want to be photographed and things mm -hmm. like that. But within that, um, things are usually very raw and very rough. And you know, we find shoes everywhere. We find uh, splatters everywhere. And underwear as well. And, you know, we've seen all sorts of things, even like <laughs> dildos and like all sorts of oh, yeah. random objects. Mm -hmm. Rocks, um, so yeah. we, that's what we like. I think that that's, and even if they do tidy the space and we capture it, it's still authentic because it's what they, what you know what they how they've put the space for us so it's still authentic in the experience that how we viewed the space how we've been in contact with that space if mm -hmm. they they tidied up it you know if they tidied it up or not i don't know about that but i'm pretty sure that they know that uh, that that's that's how you know they want us to meet them that's how they want us to get to know them you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. like sometimes you can see that these people have put meticulously everything everywhere in a mm -hmm. particular but that would just be an like extension of who they are. But then other mm -hmm. times you just see yeah. like everything everywhere. Like literally you have to walk into the studio like, yeah. I don't know, like stepping into something, you know, like in another planet or something like that. You have to be really careful as well because sometimes you don't know what's art and what's not. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. might be like, it happened mm -hmm. to me a few times. Like I'm 
positioning myself to take a picture or something and then the artist is like oh no that's not art that's, yeah, <laughs> and then also tea, you know, many times the sh studios are shared so sometimes yeah. we're snapping someone's studio and we don't realize we've gone to the next one you know okay. so it, it happens it happens sometimes when we're just doing what we have to do yeah it's fun mm -hmm. Yeah, and how is that? How is that photographing what they don't want you to photograph? As I think Martin mentioned before, like hiding stuff away. I mean, um, for instance, we visited painters, and one particular Vivian Zhang that I'm thinking about, and she had in a in a corner, in you know, at the end, hidden like a little sculpture which we thought this is interesting, and she was really ashamed of showing that, and Martin creeped in and photographed it, and then she mentioned it was her sculpture, which, you know, it's very rare because she is a painter, and mm -hmm. that's how she presents herself, but she had been testing with sculpture, and I mean, we, you know, we, we want to, <laughs> we, we don't want to represent something that they are not comfortable with at the same time. So even if we do snapshots of things that are around and maybe they're, you know, they know that they are tests, they're not finished mm -hmm. pieces. So they, yeah. you know, that's something that you have to live with. Like mm -hmm. they are going to document things in process and that's part of the studio. That's, you know, it's, it's a place where you make things. So well, sorry, uh, that being said, I have to say that um uh, once the pictures are developed you know and digitalized scanned we send them all to the artist and the artist is the one who they can choose the ones that you know go online mm -hmm. and the ones that they don't want to be online mm -hmm. so in, somehow they they are the both you know at the end of the day and they decide how the interview is going to look like which word they like which picture is better which portrait is worse yeah. So they are the ones who 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 are in control at the time to decide which pictures go to the website, and and again that's what the artists want. That's how the artists want you know to be shown to be displayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like going there, of course, because you don't know the space, right? Um, that's the thing. There's the element of the uncontrollable, right? Mm -hmm. You can never plan for things in advance, so. Mm -hmm know where the conversation is going to lead you you don't know uh, the objects that you you don't know how the studio is like we've gone to studios which are literally ki the kitchen of an artist and that's what what it is it's food other mm -hmm. times it's like a basement or it's a backyard or it's an industrial space we cannot plan the lights we cannot plan uh, you know the things that are in there so that there's always uh, uh, even as we can control like the 36 images or the you know curation of those images or the what we focus we cannot mm -hmm. you know it's not about the setup it's not about the planning which is quite a lot about you know many photographers it's more about the setup and the planning before the photograph and the mood board and uh, than the actual shoots right mm -hmm. and then it's like like that everything's planned already mm -hmm. but for us the planning is in the moment it's on the spot mm -hmm. um, yeah. we cannot plan in advance basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that's also the exciting part. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. I think there was someone else that wanted to write down a question. Maybe yeah. Sophie. It was. I think it was Sophie that who who wanted yeah. to ask a question. I'm not sure. We might have answered it already. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, sorry, it was me. But yeah, the, my question has already been answered. So thank you so much. <laughs> okay well there you go um, there you go great that's so great well i think then uh we might be if no one has any more questions i think we can um leave it here for the moment uh thank you so much uh for joining us today uh if anyone of course has any other questions i'm sure you can contact them directly um about anything. Um, as already been said, uh, this interview is going to be online at the platform of the festival. Oh, Tammy saying thank you. <laughs> That's what we have on the chat. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be available if anyone does, hasn't had a chance to see it or has arrived later or you want to revisit anything. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. I'm really uh, excited to see your future projects after lockdown and your future curational projects. Um, 
and yeah thank you for being here with us thank you everyone for joining joining us as well yes. okay thank great. you <laughs> okay goodbye <laughs> thank you so much